Okay, so today's session, we are discussing on the digital lending guidelines. Okay, now why did I take this digital lending guidelines? Because we already discussed FTC, Fair Practice Code. Over there, we discussed upon the obligation of the lenders that they have in respect to their dealings with the customer. We discussed all those in details. I felt that uh, at this point, it would be crucial to discuss digital lending guidelines because digital lending guidelines also crucially deals with uh, conduct of digital lenders with their customers as well as their other guidelines as well. Now, digital lending guidelines, I don't need to overemphasize on why it's important. It, everyone knows in today's world, everything happens digitally and so is lending. Multiple aspects of the lending as well as the entire lending processes are digitized. Previously, where a loan might take at least 10, 15 days or something processes around those, a, week, uh, a week's time to process a loan was considered very fast. In today's day, even a loan is processed two minutes, three minutes, you can get a loan. Now, how do these loans get processed? Uh, it's a very simple. There were digital softwares to do everything that they need to do from your uh, getting the customers uh, to conducting the KYCs, to sharing the documents, to all those aspects is now digitized. Now, so this gives rise to one more segment that's called digital lending. Okay. Now, this digital lending, uh, when I talk about it, itself poses a risk. Because as, as I mentioned a few minutes back, that the digital lending processes have become very fast. Now, this um, wow, rapidness or the quickness of the process itself poses a risk. Why? Because whenever I am going for a digital loan, I'm in a hurry. So providing me the correct information about the loan, at the same time maintaining the speed of the loan, uh, all those things are very different than a traditional loan. Hence, the guidelines are separate. Required. That's what RBI has done. They have brought up a separate guideline for digital lending. Before we get into what the guidelines is, in today's session, what I intend to discuss is, first is, what is digital lending? First of all, is, how, does a, how do I bifurcate between a digital lending and a non-digital lending? Because as you all may understand, in today's world, there might not be a single loan that does not have any customer, any digital interface. I'll give you a simple example. You go and take loan from a, any big uh, NBFC. Let's take example HDFC. Now we go and take loan to HDFC Limited. But uh, what happens is when you go and take the loan, it's a completely physical loan, but your entire details of your loan, your contact, uh, your custom interface and all those can be done through an HDFC app. So would, would you classify it as a digital loan? That again becomes a point of discussion that we will discuss further into the session. So no lending in today's day, I to what extent I know. I would not say no lending. There are some microfinances, I would say, might not have any single you know, digital interface from the customer. But uh, apart from some of the very few products out there, almost all the loan products or almost majorly all the loans happening into the market would somewhere have a digital interface. So what is a digital lending and what is not a digital lending? The definition itself becomes very crucial. So the very first part of the session, we'll discuss what is digital lending. Another, then we'll discuss around uh, some common products or how the structures of the digital lending works and some common terms that are commonly used in that is LSD, DLA, RE. So we'll understand those terms. Once we have understood these terms and have the understanding around them, only then I think we can move towards the guidelines that I think I might get into the subsequent sessions. Okay, because I would want to give a little bit time here to discuss these concepts in detail. That he, uh, when we discuss the guidelines, you're clear what we're talking about. The guidelines would have these words repeatedly coming up. So before we get into that, Today, let's discuss the basics. Okay, so the very first thing over here is digital lending. So as I mentioned, the, uh, to be a digital lending, two aspects, digital and lending. So lending ho raha hai, digital ho raha hai. But to what extent is it happening digitally? Okay, so here, the very part that whether a lending is a digital or not, is like definition of digital lending. Uh, I'll show you that definition as well. Huh. Digital lending has been defined as a remote and automated lending process, majorly used, majorly by use of seamless uh, digital technologies in customer acquisition, uh, credit assessment to loan, uh, credit assessment, loan approval, loan disbursement, associated customer services. So, now here the term is digital lending. It's like normal so definition that this is a very big part of your digital technology. Majorly use of seamless digital technologies. That's what they prescribe in the digital lending. So, here actually we derive that whether a lending is a digital or not. Now, how do I arrive at whether a digital lending is a digital or not? It's very simple that major part of your digital lending. But now again the question comes, what do you mean by the major part? Like, how can I say that its particular lending ka major part is uh, digital? This, so, my answer would be it's a very subjective test. Without having the details of a transaction in hand, it would be very difficult to uh, say whether this lending is digital or not. Here, I can say we can put to use what we commonly refer to as smell test. So what does the smell test mean? We actually, you have to smell the transaction and see what's actually happening over there and then accordingly determine or give your answer to it. So a smell test would be required to determine whether the transaction is a digital lending or not. The principle is simple. Whether uh, to the significant extent we are using the digital technology, it's a digital lending. Okay, there are multiple levels into which we talk about a digital lending. Okay, once uh, when you're sourcing the customer, then when onboarding of customer, sharing of documents, conducting KYC, then disbursement, then collections, recoveries, uh, customer interactions, all there are multiple aspects, right? So what all aspects are digital and what all are not? And how does the customer interact with the NBFC? How much digital technologies are utilized between this? That actually acts as a uh, conduit or the answer where whether this lending is digital or not. So once we have established that this particular lending is digital or not, then we move towards different terms. Okay. And what are the structures? Are? One more thing over here, in case you want to uh, understand in detail whether uh, lending is digital or not, we have a detailed video on YouTube uh, on the Shastra ask, is this lending digital or not? I think that's the title. Over there, we have in this detail discuss on this only. I think it's a very long discussion around whether the lending is digital or not. So, can, so first, we have to establish whether we are a digital, whether the loan or the product that we are discussing is a digital lending or not. Once we have established that, okay, after all this long repeated discussion, uh, we have established that this lending is digital. We need to then check what are the compliances. 
before going into compliance we will first discuss what are the structures under which the digital lending works because without understanding the structure guideline is not there okay, till the time we don't know what are the how does the market work how can we go in this with the regulations around it so first of all how does the market work around these digital lending products okay one very common structure that i think most of you have somewhere see is the lending through digital platforms or digital lending apps we under guidelines call them dlas that is digital lending app so this this term dla i will be repeatedly using when we discuss the digital lending guidelines so these digital what are these digital lending apps these are basically as the name suggests these are the apps or websites or mobile applications where you go uh, and to get the credit and these are the platforms that act as a single point of interface for you uh, there are very common names available into the market there is crazy b there is lazy pay uh, then there is uh, liqui loans and i can num number 10 numbers of lending apps that are available in the market so what these apps do you just go into the app you have no customer interface uh, sorry you will have no interface with the representative of the lender all the discussion or all the uh, or all or all the work that goes up around that happens through this app only so these are the digital lending apps so one very common structure that is we call balance sheet lending over here is here that the borrower comes to a platform this platform then interacts with the lender so now this platform this platform holder is usually not the lender this uh, they only act as an agent of the lender to source customers okay they may they might sometimes be lenders platform as well but not uh, always or majorly they won't be so this is a separate platform that's a technological platform on which the borrowers come uh, they see that this loan particular is available to them and there is a lender if it uh, there might be some filters if it fulfills that filters they will pass on the query to the lender if lender finds the borrower suitable they will lend to the borrower but the entire interaction happens with this platform so sometimes the borrower may not even interact with the lender their entire uh, interaction or their entire journey happens on that platform itself from application till the closing of the loans the entire journey can happen on this platform they have not even seen met or even talked to any representative of the lender that that's how, that's how digital this uh, these days the lending is so that is the one structure that works now here as i mentioned that most of the cases platform may not be the lender the another structure uh, that we can see over here is where the sourcing is done by a lender which then approaches another lender and both these lender then together give a loan to the borrower so say this is a lender a okay he got an inquiry from a customer say for a loan of 100 rupees now he does not have funds to give loans to so many borrowers what he does is he uh, gets into arrangement with a lender another lender say lender b where out of this 100 rupees loan this lender a will say give 20% say 20 rupees and lender b will give 80 rupees so 80% of the loan so they both together give a loan to the borrower and that is what we commonly refer to as co lending over here what happens is in both the cases uh, wherever the lender is sourcing or the platform is sourcing in both the cases uh, what happens is that the sourcing agent may it be the lender or the platform they get a fee so they will get a fee for fee they source a borrower and uh, the lender lends to them and lender earns the interest that's how commonly the, it works but the fee that we generally talk about now it's not fixed when you talk about in the practical sense there won't be a fixed fee okay per customer you get 20 rupees or 15 rupees it's not like that it's generally based on the interest at which you have lent the borrower so i will give you an example how it works a lender say it he agrees to lend it to a certain profile of borrowers at say uh, 15% so what these platforms would do is these platform will go to borrowers they will offer them a interest rate of say 20 24% and whatever the difference between this 15 and 20 or 24 whatever they have lent this goes as a commission or fee to the uh, platform or the sourcing lender as the case may be so here this differential is their uh, earning potential till here i think it's clear before i move ahead from here things will get a little complex from here so before we go ahead from here any doubts till here okay so uh, now the question arises ki ab maine bola ki platform jo hai wo jayega 20 24% ke upar customer ko loan dega lender bola ki main 15% ke upar dene ko ready hu to agar ye lender directly jaake borrower ko kyun nahi de sakta hai normal the question agar uh, borrower jo hai 20 se 24% dia let's for example take 22% borrower 22% dene ke liye ready hai aur lender 15 pe dene ke liye ready hai that is the significant opportunity available to the lender itself to go and lend at 22% why does he need to do that why does he need a platform in middle or why does he need a sourcing lender in between the very simple example is that first first and foremost a very practical one that the lender may not have the direct reach to the borrower or the technologies that are required may not be available with the lender to undertake this transaction hence the approach they take is they uh, act as a platform they help them source the customer because even for lender if they go to them probably the lender doesn't have the expertise uh, i would not call they do not have the expertise but they do not have the resources see even the lender is in the business of lending so they have the expertise but ha we can expertise in a matter you can say for the particular niche of the borrower they might not have the expertise yes that's how we can put it Uh, say some uh, some platform has a very good customer base in uh, Rajasthan. Uh, my lender may not be able to go and lend over there, but the platform or that another lender is able to get loans from there. Mm -hmm. So the expertise and the niche may not be available to the lender. Yes. So that's how. Uh, that's why the first reason is that. Another reason is that's very common that I think we'll discuss in detail in another session. We'll need another session to discuss guarantees. So what happens is these uh, sourcing lenders or these platforms would some would not sometimes would majorly provide guarantees to the lenders. In case these borrowers default, I will going to pay pay you over. there are another regulations to it just to give you a, a background initially when these digital lending guidelines that i am going to discuss in the subsequent session came these guidelines actually put a restriction on those uh, on these guarantee arrangements that made a huge issue in the fintech market because in all the arrangements with the digital lending were backed by guarantees no, but now 
Haan. Yes. So Again. this 5% regulation came uh, recently. The digital lending guidelines that we are going to discuss further, they actually put a restriction. And then recently, RBI then came up with new guidelines. They provide around the regulations around digital lending guidelines that, of course, we will discuss in the future. That 5% is one of the limits that they've set over there. Right? So two structures that we discussed in the digital lending ecosystem. So this platform, wala, this is commonly known as sourcing arrangement. Balance sheet lending, so commonly will, I, whenever I say sourcing arrangement, this is this arrangement whereby the platform is only sourcing the loan. Entire loan is given by a lender. Uh, another is co-lending where there's a lender which sources the loans and these both lenders go together and lend it. Now there can also be a mix of both where there's a sourcing plus co-lending. How does that happen? Okay, this platform, uh, he, it sources a loan and then two lenders come together and lend to that borrower. So there's a sourcing done by one pa party and then that sourcing, then there is a co-lending by another two lenders to go and lend to them. These type of arrangements are also there into the market. Okay, this is how broadly it works. Uh, market rate lending is very uh, different. Uh, it's like, a, I can say, I won't take name of the websites, but they are like a classified ads. So there are multiple lenders listed out over there. You just go choose whichever suits you and you can just uh, take loan from whichever suits you. However, when we talk about these uh, co-lending and balance sheet lending, they actually have a particular arrangement with uh, specific lenders and they would source loan for those lenders. Huh, of course, there can be multiple lenders or multiple types of loan and multiple customer bases. But of course, uh, they have a specific arrangements. Okay, till here, that's how that. So we discussed what is digital lending? What are the common structures under which the digital lending works? Which is the most common one and the most used one? I think co-lending, right? Ha, co lending is a popular one between when we talk about two different NBFCs dealing with. Uh, so, loan sourcing is equally popular. So, actually, we do not have any, to the extent I am not aware on any volumes volumes available to us, but both the arrangements are very common in the industry. Both of them happen very common. Now, okay. now the shift, see, previously, I would say sourcing was more famous because the fintech platforms, they were very happy being not having an NBFC license and, uh, you know, relying on the other lenders to come and lend to them and earning a spread. They did not need so hectic compliances from RBI and they were happy doing it. But slowly, the RBI shift towards fintech has specifically lending fintechs has been very strict. Hence, now fintechs are moving towards having an NBC license and towards co-lending. So previously, it was uh, more focused on sourcing. Now it's gradually shifting towards co-lending. Because they become the norms that become more stringent, right? Yes, norms are more stringent. And the, yes, so sourcing norms are stringent as well as stringent. RBI's, scrutiny, huh? RBI's scrutiny towards these kind of arrangements have become stringent. Okay. Okay. So before we get into the digital lending guidelines that came out uh, sometime back, there was so previously RBI came out in June 2020 with a simple circular. So this circular did not prescribe much details. It did not have a so detailed regulation. It provided four or five things like as the platform that is acting as your agent or sourcing loans for you, you need to give the disclosures and name of that uh, particular sourcing on your website so that the customer is aware, okay, this lender is working for you. That, that was the one thing. So in case they want to verify that uh, how these platforms are lending to you, they have the details available. Then there was that lender's name. So when we talk about the documentation, so these sourcing agents they do, or the co -lend, or the sourcing partner, they are not uh, portraying themselves as a lender, but are providing complete details of the lenders as well. Because uh, we in the previous session, I think we discussed on the grievance addressal. Till the time you don't know the lenders, how are you going to enforce those sections against them? So uh, to ensure that the grievance addressal system mechanisms as well as the other benefits that the RBI regulation brings in for the customer are available, you need to make proper disclosures of the lender to the customer. Those guidelines for sanction letter would have details of both in case there's a co-lending, the logo of both their party should be specified. All those details were given. It's a short circle, not a detailed one, prescribing a few basic requirements, ensuring that the customer is fully aware about the arrangement. That was the June 20, 2020 circular. Now, with, up to that, the RBI came out with the digital lending guidelines, a comprehensive guidelines regulating digital lending. Uh, these guidelines explicitly or in a very detailed discuss about multiple aspects, like how your sourcing would be there, grievance redressal, as well as flow of funds, technology and data related compliances, as well as your guarantee arrangements. It discusses almost all different aspects of the lending, which were previously missing out. Okay, so before we get into uh, these guidelines, today we'll just discuss two terms. One is Digital Lending Act and another is LSP. So LSP is a full form. It stands for uh, Lending Service Provider, if I'm not wrong. We so commonly use LSP that I'm missing out on the full form itself. Yeah, so, that's uh, right. That's huh? Remember, we that's right. LSP, we were lending service providers, yes. Lending service providers. So uh, we deal about lending service providers. Now the term here is important. Like we are not uh, only talking about sourcing. There can be multiple aspects. You can see the table over here. There are customer acquisition, there is underwriting support, there is disbursement, monitoring. There can be multiple role that a lending service provider plays. So anyone who is acting as your agent, and for a fee, so here is the definition, an agent or regular who carries for a fee from RE, one or more lenders function. So these all are lenders function, but a lending service provider came in and gave you, we will provide you the services, you give give us out these services. So they are called lending service provider. What this guideline does is it prescribes certain uh, regulation or compliance obligations upon both. One is REs, REs means regulated entities that are the lenders. So it prescribes certain compliances to the REs that when you're lending through LSPs or you're using the services of LSPs, comply with these regulations. So, and so basically the owners or compliance obligation was placed on the REs that ensure that the LSPs perform properly and some compliance obligations were placed on both. And the onus of compliance that was placed on the uh, regulated entity. So LSP, lending service provider, any aspect of the lending, uh, it acts as an agent for a fee, it's a lending service provider. It's as simple as that. Okay. So for uh, multiple points over here, it should be a, here I've given some examples of how a lending service provider, or uh, what all services they can provide. Okay. Another term is uh, DLA, digital lending apps, or uh, digital lending application. 
this is, as I mentioned, these are basically apps, website or interface through which you can, uh, through which the lending processes happen. There are certain compliances and obligations placed on the digital lending application as well by the RBI. These regulations, I think we'll discuss in the subsequent sessions. So uh, today's session, we discussed upon what is digital lending, uh, what are the common structures prevalent in the digital lending, meaning of LSP, and then meaning of DLA. These are the things that would very common. We need a basic understanding before we get into the regulation. I think subsequent session, we'll discuss about the compliances and what all other uh, obligations upon them, what you can do, what you cannot do. Uh, there is a lot to discuss around that.